Okay, hello, hello, hello. I am so happy. I have 20 minutes with Rosemary Watola Traumer, who is, hello, Rosemary. Hello, Lori. Hello. Well, this is our first time meeting, so you're seeing us in pure spontaneity. I do have a few questions, and the reason I wanted to talk to Rosemary today, by the way, Rosemary is in a tiny town called Placerville, which is near... Telluride. Telluride. Colorado. Telluride, Colorado. And I've known Rosemary's work for a while. Um, I think I found you on Rattle, and I've seen other work of yours. I've used your work to inspire writers with and shared it with lots and lots of people. And the reason that I wanted to talk to you was because you write poems from real life. And you know, you source from real life. And a lot of the people who are on this Facebook page are dealing every day, especially because we set up this page during the pandemic. And so we've just got this real life stuff. This isn't writing about something maybe in the future or writing about, you know, um, some other thing that happened way back when. This is now. Mm -hmm. And so we're really sourcing from now. And so I wanted to talk to you because um, for starters, you write a poem every day. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah. So since 2006. And do you, do you publish that poem every day on your website? crazy right i sure do every day every day i put my first drafts out into the world which which i think shows that my value is on practice yeah. more than on product i mean i do have books and in the books i take the daily poems and i sift through them and find the best ones and i edit those right but i really value the the conversation with the daily I, I just think that's the most important thing that that I personally have to to offer the world is this this ongoing conversation with the world around me that I do through poetry and how it both helps me learn and unlearn about the world. Well, yeah, I I want to um, ask you about that, and also I'm gonna um, I want to make sure before this is over that I ask you why we're why we're turning to poems and why you turn to your poems. Um, let me ask you before I forget though, because when it occurred, you know, when I realized you wrote a poem every day, I thought a couple things. One is, wow, where, where does she source her, where does this material come from? I want to know about that because the people that are listening to this are also sourcing. And mm -hmm. so as a poet who writes a poem every day, I'm really curious how you, you know, do you hear the sound of it? Do you hear the whisper of it? When do you know you're in the midst of a poem? And then the second question, which I'll ask again, if you don't answer it is, what about perfectionism? Because uh -huh. as you said, you know, to, to source it, to write it, and then to put it out, that's yeah. something. So well, you know, we were talking about all my favorite things to talk about. Thanks, Lori. So first of all, where do I get the poems from? This has changed over time. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I used to search for them all day. I was on the lookout for them. Where's the poem? You know, is it going, is it in the, is, is it in the garden today? Is it, is it in this interaction in the coffee shop today? Is it with my children? Where's the poem? And, hmm. and that, the, that practice, I'll say, the, the thrill of writing a poem every day is that it changes everything about the way that we live our lives. Hmm. I'll say it for myself. It has changed everything about the way that I live my life. Mm -hmm how I interact with the world is, is completely different because of that original engagement, but also knowing every day that I sit down in the quiet, right? And, and have this time I, I give myself to engage with the world, to really show up. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing that's shifted in the last year maybe is that I don't do that active searching anymore. Mm, mm. Uh, it's more, I think what it is, is that I'm more comfortable with that blank now than I ever have been. Do you if, say I, I, you, blank. blank? The blank page. Yeah, yeah. You know, we show up at a blank page and it used to be terrifying to me to show up at a blank page. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is going to tie into the perfectionism question in part because I wanted to put something good on it, right? I wanted, to, if I was going to put something on it, it better be good right. because I am totally a failed perfectionist. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the thing about then showing up at that blank for 15 years, mm -hmm. 13, 13 years, now 14 years, something like that, mm -hmm. that I 
have come to trust that something will happen mm-hmm. and, and that that magic mm-hmm. is ever available to me. Like, and it's really what it is, right? That you show up with blank and then by the time you're done that something has happened mm-hmm. and it, it does, I didn't say something good has happened, right? But something happened, something showed up. And if we sit down, that's real magic, right? There was nothing and now there's this poem. Amazing. And I really trust that now that I can show up blank and meet that blank and allow things to, to rise up in that moment. If they don't, I have all kinds of tricks for things that I do. You know, if I sit there long enough and really nothing's happened, mm-hmm. you know, I do. I sift through the, the events of the day. I read other people's poems. I, I look out the window. Mm-hmm. I always write at night. I always after the kids go to bed. I think it's important if you have a daily practice mm-hmm. to have a designated mm-hmm. time that helps any habit, right? If there's mm-hmm. a designated time. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. And it reminds me of something I heard a long time ago. Maybe it was, I'm not remembering, um, but something about like, I, I don't like to, I don't like to talk about the muse as in, you know, the muse comes or it doesn't come, but the regularity, I wonder if it's kind of like, it's that sort of energetic uh, expectation, like, and now is this, this is the time for this. Oh, you yeah. Know? Oh, friend, there's nothing like habit on our side, right? And, and I'm, there's no doubt in my mind that the fact that I have so many years of practice behind me is what's allowed me during this very challenging time mm-hmm. to show up every day. Mm-hmm. Right, because I feel, in fact, I feel totally galvanized to show up every day. Mm-hmm. Right now, I, I feel like poetry has something so important to offer the world right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go back to what you said about perfectionism because it it relates to this next thing. One of the best gifts about writing every day is that it helped me let go of that expectation of being perfect. Mm -hmm. For so many years, if if it wasn't going to be perfect, then I didn't write anything at all, which meant I could go months without writing. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. to write a poem every day, you you immediately have to accept that you will not write a masterpiece every day. You can't, nobody can. So the freedom then shows up to know that you can just, you can write. Mm -hmm. something and Mm -hmm. the promise I have these series of promises that I make myself and promise number two is that Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be good Mm -hmm. but it does have to be true and I believe so much in authenticity as a driver for us if we are writing something true and it doesn't mean factual right you can right I mean you're you're writing it not just to sound good Mm -hmm you're writing it because there's a full resonance with you. Like you write it down and you you have that. We all know what that feels like when you're like, that's it, that's it, that's it. Um, Mm -hmm. To make authenticity what I'm driving towards as opposed to Mm -hmm. good. Yes, right. Sometimes when I think about authenticity, because I I play with those words, truth, authenticity, and then I've come down to just sort of naming things as they are. Just Mm -hmm. name things, even if naming it is sadness or loneliness or Mm -hmm. yearning. Mm -hmm. It's the naming of the thing that is where that buzz and that resonance for me comes from. Mm Because then I know I'm in territory that's true. Right. Just in my head, I'm actually vibrating from a place of like I can feel it coming and I'm going to name it. Right. Or even, I mean, to, to unname it right? To, to know that when we name it and it doesn't feel quite right, mm-hmm. to know that we can then say mm-hmm. in our poem, yeah. you know, that's not what I mean. Right. Or, or to ask questions instead of thinking we need to come up with answers. I just, mm-hmm. I just know for a fact that my favorite poems that I read, my favorite, the truest poems that I write are the poems that are willing to dance with the unknown, the poems that are willing to just really surrender and let the poem mm-hmm. know more than I do. Mm-hmm. And myself show up uh, willing to learn from the poem does that make sense you're talking about like poetry is divination yeah well that sounds very fancy but (laughs) (laughs) well you know like 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 you're like you're channeling something for yourself and even if it's just one word that comes out that sort of that's right then you you know you move forward yes yes that's so it well and this is the difference really Lori, between writing the poem so that we can tell other people things about how the world is Mm -hmm. versus 
writing a poem so that the poem can tell us about how the world is. Those are the poems that, that change us, right? Those are the poems that have transformed me. Mm-hmm. I've never grown from a poem where I thought I knew how the answers, what the answers were supposed to be, ever. So beautiful, I love it. And, and just, it, I guess I wanna just say then, why we were talking earlier before I turned on this tape and we were kind of joking that everyone's turned to the poets during the pandemic. And you, what did you say about that? Just what's your response to? Yeah, well, I, I think I mentioned that I read this, this funny thing, you know, like, you know, the world's in trouble when people start turning to poems. <laughs> but of course, but of course, people are turning to poems right now, because poems, mm-hmm. poems are the other news, right? So, so we have the, the news of the day, mm-hmm. but poems are more like the news of, of of what it is to be alive, right? They're continually plumbing the landscape of the heart. They're continually telling us, what does it mean to be alive? Mm-hmm. Every poem that's that's worth reading will some way mm-hmm. comment on that. What does it mean? Yes. Not that it answers that question, but that all the poems as a conversation mm-hmm. are answering that question. What are we doing here? What does it mean to be alive? Mm-hmm. So that the poems themselves touch on moments Mm-hmm. which is, I think, part of why mm-hmm. we can turn to poems right now in the midst of a crisis. Mm-hmm. Poems typically, not always, but typically focus on moments. They focus on this, this little piece. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of something really big, mm-hmm. we can do that. We can focus on what is it to be planting in the garden right now. We can focus on what is it to say goodbye to your mother on the phone right now and worry you're never going to say goodbye to her again. Mm -hmm. We can can focus on those moments. To write a novel about this time, to write a a giant, you know, creative nonfiction piece on this on this time can't be done. We don't have enough perspective yet. Right. Right. But a poem Mm -hmm. can touch that Mm -hmm. moment in a way that will have resonance that helps us oh that that's what it is right now to be alive that's so beautiful and also i just kind of want to extend to anybody who's watching this that we're talking about poems but we can also just extend this to small pieces yes small moments yes of course absolutely just these these sort of these memoir moments of what's going on we call it a poem but i'm not going to get fancy like that we're just name, you know, we're, we're moving, we're sort of opening the curtain and dropping into this moment, whether that be a poem or something else. Absolutely, a short form, all short, short forms form. right now. Yes, that's, yeah. that's, exactly, that's well said. And, and the thing that's so special about now, like I've always loved poems like that. Um, the, you know, um, Ellen Bass says she writes prose poems, uh, she writes praise poems. Mm-hmm. She says, because when she's writing, she knows we're going to die. And so all of her poems have that that understanding in them. They're always right there and there mm-hmm. and, you know. And, and so, you know, it's really amazing to write from poems like that. But now, during mm-hmm. this time when we, there's so much we don't know, like we really don't know. Like yeah. We really don't know. And so poetry, as you said, you know, it speaks to that, it speaks so graciously into that unknowing well this is this is this is so exactly it and i love that that's what ellen bass says by the way about you know i'm going to die and so on the other side of this and all all poems have to have some kind of tension in them that's a gorgeous built-in tension and no wonder we love her poems so much right but but to say that um to say that a poem leads us into not knowing like this is probably one of the most valuable things that a poem has to offer us yeah. right now you know in this time when we really don't know what's going to happen next which quite honestly is all the time right <laughs> right. right now we're we've never been more aware of that as as a as a globe mm-hmm. so with a global awareness of that at the same time how exciting is that and poems you know, I, I like to think that poems help us kind of step off of that cliff mm-hmm. of not knowing, like that the poem is almost like gives us little wings that, that, when we, that allow us to step off that cliff and to really engage with it in a way mm-hmm. that, um, mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't make it any less frightening perhaps, but that helps us to dance with it more intimately and, and know it as authentic as the authentic way of being in the world. I think poem, I think poems offer that to us. That's beautiful. And you're right. You know, the truth is, is that we think we know what's happening. We've got <laughs> schedules and we've got plans. 
But in fact, we don't ever know really. And I do love that about poetry and I love that about writing. And I'm so glad you said that. Um, I want to just ask a couple more questions and I'm saving time because I know you're gonna read us a poem. So I haven't forgotten and I'm really appreciative of that. I would say like, if you were gonna give a little instruction to these mm -hmm. people who are watching, who are sitting down every day and opening these prompts, mm -hmm. um, and what might you say just in terms of, um, I guess the question, you know, the prompt itself asks a question often or leads you into something. And for people who don't know what to write about or mm -hmm. who are um, feel like, well, I've been writing about that or I'm circling the drain or it's, it's very therapeutic and, but I haven't really written anything. Like, is there anything you would just say to just sort of, throw a bouquet out at them, uh, <laughs> just, you know, how open can we get here? Yeah, those, are, those are all good questions. I feel like there's, I'm going to try and distill it into one thing, but yeah. so many immediate re responses. Oh. Well, number one, if you write the same poem over and over and over again, that's okay, mm -hmm. right? Let's say that every single day you write a poem about the moon. Yeah that's fine. Guess what? You can, you can pretty much endlessly explore what there is to say about the moon and what it has to teach you. And when you're done, it will kick you out. Right? <laughs> and, and then you'll write ne the next thing. So I, I just feel like there's this opportunity to, for us to be extremely generous with ourselves and know that if we're writing authentically, mm -hmm. then you are, ex you are doing the work. That, that's all you're asked to do is to write, yeah. write something that's real. To you, if you can do that, my goodness, it doesn't matter. And the best advice ever, ever, really. Now, I thought I came up with this, but apparently William Stafford said it first. He also wrote a poem a day, and that is lower your standards. Mm -hmm. I just feel like that is the. Mm -hmm. If we can properly let our properly, what a word is that? If we can mm -hmm. genuinely mm -hmm. lower our standards and know mm -hmm. that you can always have them back. But that, that drive toward to writing something good will destroy all writing. It will destroy creativity. You can, you can always edit it later. Your, your inner editor won't let you not. <laughs> yeah. That's the best advice ever. And thank you very much for that. Um, it's really generous. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want you to read. So you picked out a poem. I picked out a poem. And you want to say anything about it or you just want to go for it? Well, I will say uh, I have a teenage son and it, this is such a crazy time, right? Because we're, we're not supposed to, a, a teenage boy, what does he want, right? A teenage boy wants to be away from his family and with his friends. That's what they're, they're made for right now. That's what drives them hormonally. And instead, this enforced closeness. Yeah. <laughs> which has allowed for a certain kind of blossoming to take place in our house. So this just was written then in the last couple of weeks or? Uh-huh, yeah, this is just a couple, maybe two weeks, two weeks ago. Good. Quarantine. This morning, my teenage boy and I sit quiet on the couch. He does not move to pick up his phone. I do not rise to work or rush to make a meal. We sit leaning the trunks of our bodies into each other. We do not say much. I close my eyes and cherish his sapling weight. There are so few people I dare now hug, our hands, our bodies dangerous. But here, in this house, so still I can almost hear him growing. Here, in these minutes that fell off the clock, here, I remember how surely we baptize each other with touch. Such simple blessing, silence, the metronome of breath, the leaning in, infectious love. Mm, wow, I haven't seen that. That's so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, really, really remarkable. He might be embarrassed if he knew <laughs> I was sharing it. <laughs> Don't let the teenage boy know. Um, 
And I, and I was going to ask you too, you know, do you write about your family? And apparently you do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do. I do a lot. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you all day and I want to just be your neighbor and I'm just going to scamper over and we can throw <laughs> poetry across the fence or something. I love that idea. You are so generous to spend time with us today. And um, I hope our, 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 uh, our knowing of one another deepens. If, if I never see you, I will be reading your work. And I hope- Oh, Lori, thanks. Thanks for the work you're doing, by the way, supporting other writers and, and thanks writers, because this is such an obvious time for us to realize how important every single voice is, for us to realize that each one of us has an important piece of this, right. this global puzzle and how, right. how we need each other and that there is a, com a communion that happens when people come together and share their words and their voices and their ears and their hearts. And the more open we can be in this moment, the more vulnerable, the more, the more we can grow. Yeah, that's, that's right. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Thanks, right. Lori. I'm going to turn off this tape. Thank you so much. So beautiful.